Zimbabwe. This thing actually is happening all over Cape Town right now where people are taking the land, where people are building houses because these people who are building these houses are living in shacks. You would find about 8 to 10 people living in one room shack. So there you can see even the limitation of COVID-19 or the follow of the regulations. It's, it's broken already. So if one person is getting the COVID-19 there, it's, it, it, is, it is largely that a lot of people are going to get COVID-19 in that house. Please, please, no. So metropolis and law enforcement, they came through. Yes, and, and coming through, they did not talk to the people. They did what they good at, violating people's rights. So it was, it was heartbreaking for me to be in that situation, especially when they started to attack a pregnant woman who was looking for her ID. She could see the bag hanging from the material that they were carrying to the truck. She said, I just want my ID. When I give birth, I will need that ID. And that guy kept on pushing her. That irritated me as a black man in South Africa. That is when I started to fight for her until I got arrested. What we've seen and what we've discussed, what we've witnessed across Cape Town is that uh, these individual cases of abuse of power, of e e victimization um, are not just individual cases, uh, they are systemic. And so what we are saying is that in order for us to deal um, with all these things, uh, the whole law enforcement of the city of Cape Town must be abolished because it is an anti-poor and anti-black structure that is used to victimize poor and black people across the city of Cape Town. We are here today now. We moved from the courts to come to the offices of the law enforcement to say that we are speaking against the brutality that we're seeing them um, imposing on black people, particularly women and children. We are now 26 years into our democracy as a South Africa. And what we're seeing now, currently in Kailicha, um, that people are being evicted into homelessness and there's the violence that's imposed by law enforcement towards poor people whose crime, whose only crime is looking for a place to call a home. I think the law enforcement needs to be demolished, it needs to be destroyed because their mindset is effed up, sorry for saying that. Yes, because what it does to the people, how many people who have been hit, how many people who have been shot during the lockdown, and we are saying we are free. Are we free? You understand? So people, the whole community, and then they were threatened that Amachoni. We are not a gig for Amachoni for them to come and hit us as Lokshin. Amachoni Akubelu hit Ishabandi during the apartheid, and now they find it good, it's a gig, but now it's better than Lokshin. Matrimonium 
and to blab them lensing. Instead of so, Bona, they have failed in their duty to engage communities and to give communities information. Also, if Uti they have plans, what about the rest of the informal settlements that have existed for 15 years, for 20 years, for 30 years? Where are those plans? Where have those plans been? Because these occupations are not the only occupations in Cape Town. All informal settlements in Cape Town started as occupations. Some of them started 30 years ago. Um, in 1990, 1989, they have already existed. They still exist today. They don't have basic services. They don't have dignified water or sanitation or clean water. As was in Oaziko. These are just excuses to continue for Yena to evict people um, and to, to run away from it, which they have failed in providing people with housing and dignified basic uh, services.